Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. In our last few sketches, we went over the myeloid neoplasms, cancers that derive from myeloid progenitor cells. These are stem cells in the bone marrow that give rise to the myeloid cell lineage, which includes red blood cells, megakaryocytes, which make platelets, monocytes, and granulocytes, such as neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils. Well, forget it. Clear your mind. Because we're moving on to the lymphoid cell line. That means B cells and T cells, friends. This sketch is the first in our series on the lymphoid neoplasms, and we're starting with acute and chronic lymphoid leukemia. Now, I know that you're thinking, hey, hey, whoa there. That says leukemia and lymphoma. There's something you're not telling me here. I thought we trusted each other. I want my key back. Okay, first of all, you're overreacting. And do you know what? I feel like we need to set some kind of boundaries in our relationship here. This is getting a little too serious for me. Now, about that whole leukemia lymphoma thing. You're right. Turns out, the B and T cell neoplasms we're about to cover can present both as a leukemia or as a lymphoma. These are just general terms for where in the body these neoplastic B and T cells are setting up shop. In the case of a lymphoid leukemia, neoplastic lymphoid cells take over the bone marrow and cause cancer cells to leak out into the peripheral circulation. This is represented by the royal banner, which shows the cancer crab in the marrow sending malignant cells into the blood. Contrast this with lymphoma, which at Sketchy, we symbolize with a chessboard overloaded with chess pieces. The board represents a lymph node, and that accumulation of white T-cell knights and B-cell archers is meant to evoke an image of abnormally proliferating lymphocytes in that area. You see, in the case of lymphoma, Neoplastic lymphoid cells form a tumor in a lymphoid organ outside of the bone marrow, such as the lymph nodes in spleen. Unfortunately, it gets even more complicated, because leukemias can present in the lymph nodes and look like lymphoma, while lymphomas can take over the bone marrow and present like leukemias. So, by the power vested in me, I officially give you permission to stop worrying about whether it's technically a leukemia or a lymphoma. I'll get back to this definition a little later on. What's most important for you to know is not where the cell came from, but what kind of cell it is. Just like in the myeloid leukemia sketch, we'll be dividing the lymphoid neoplasms into both acute and chronic forms. Starting with acute. Acute lymphoblastic leukemia lymphoma, which will shorten to ALL, is going to be illustrated out in the courtyard of the castle. Think of these children as immature lymphoid cells, honing their skills before they join the ranks of the leukocyte army. Recall that the lymphoid lineage includes B cells, represented by an antibody archer, and T cells, embodied by the knight in training with a T-shaped sword. The fact that they're all kids is important. This is acute lymphoblastic leukemia lymphoma, not lymphocytic. That's right, we are not making mature lymphocytes here. ALL is caused by a somatic mutation in a B cell or T cell precursor. Differentiation halts at an immature lymphoblast stage, before these cells start proliferating out of control. These fledgling knights are also here to remind you that ALL is the most common cancer in children, with a peak incidence between two to five years of age. Ah, then here's a little three-year-old. Still too young to train, but cheers on his comrades nonetheless. While the majority of ALL cases occur in children with no other known medical conditions, Down syndrome is associated with a 10 to 20-fold increase in risk. One to 3% of ALL cases, in fact, are attributable to Down syndrome, Symbolized here by the downtown label marking the planned location for the new Winterfell city center. As you might remember from our last sketch, Down syndrome also increases the risk of acute myeloid leukemia, or AML. All right, there are two categories of ALL that we're going to cover, the B-cell variety and the T-cell variety. See that bone quiver worn by the fledgling B-cell archer? Precursor B-cells are derived from and begin to mature in the bone marrow. So, this is where a mutation occurs in a pre-B cell to cause B cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia, or B cell ALL. B cell ALL is actually the most common form of ALL, making up about 80% of cases. T cells are also derived from the marrow, but they mature in the thymus. It's where they train, if you will. So, in this sketch, T cell training is occurring in the thyme garden. That's time for thymus. It's here, in the thymus, that a mutation occurs in a pre-T cell to cause T-cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia, or T-cell ALL. T 
T-cell ALL is less common than B-cell ALL and accounts for around 15 to 17% of cases. Also, T-cell ALL usually occurs in male teenagers between the ages of 15 and 20. So notice that we've made this precursor white knight a strapping young teenager.